So I usually put in a quick uh, introduction um, from the grey matter side. So we've been in business since 1983. Uh, we're considered a top gold Microsoft uh, SMB partner. Uh, licensing has mainly been our, our forte, but we've now started uh, venturing into uh, new offerings such as uh, software asset management, uh, migration and professional services, just to name a few, um, just, just to make you aware of that. Um, I'm also just going to pop in a, a quick slide as well, just around the uh, different partners that we work with as well. So um, any projects or any vendors that you're looking at as well, feel free to uh, get us involved as uh, we have the relevant expertise um, in-house to assist with that. Um, I'm also going to send these slides out as well um, afterwards just to make sure you've got a copy. And um, furthermore, if you have any questions at all, um, my contact details will be at the end of the slides. So how best to describe Office 365? Um, it's a collection of um, Microsoft products um, delivered and updated through uh, cloud services. And uh, what it does is uh, these products are focused on uh, productivity and embrace everything that uh, users will need in their role to be as effective in their position as they possibly can. And Microsoft, um, just to back this up, have invested around nine billion pounds to uh, to assist along the way. So it's a massive investment. Um, and the way in which I kind of position cloud in the first place is that it's uh, it's a light offering. So what I mean by that um, is that with uh, a typical on-premise solution, um, I kind of call it a, a heavy a heavy solution. So it's very heavy to um, in 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 regards to costing, uh, it's very heavy uh, to manage um, and the extra cost as well in regards to electricity, air conditioning, replacements and you know training to get up to speed on you know looking after the, uh, the hardware and software in the first place. And obviously, as, as the picture suggests, I think everyone can agree it's quite heavy to lift and move as well. Um, but with cloud services, you get that sort of capacity, but without the massive price tag. Um, and usually in my webinars, I usually go on to um, explain this in a little bit more detail, um, how um, it can benefit your business further. But what I'm going to do in this webinar is I'm going to um, explain how, how it benefited us as a business. So uh, I'm going to go into our, our story around how we made the move to Office 365. So we made the move about two and a half years ago. I'll just explain our previous setup. So we uh, had an Exchange uh, 2013 server and on our desktops we were running Windows XP with Office 2010. Um, so one of the reasons for looking at us moving to Office 365 was that, you know, there was the always to stay up to date, um, which was fantastic. But as also, um, as well as that, we were planning a uh, temporary office move as well. Um, so our um, existing on premise was due for a um, due for an upgrade and renovation. So we were, we were planning an office move and we were looking at um, a way to be um, mobile so that when we were moving offices we can um, you know remain productive as we possibly can you know without any uh, without any service lapse so what we did first was we moved our exchange across to um, exchange online within office 365 um, so that was a simple migration across as exchange server 2013 was the version at the at the moment so the migration was fairly straightforward and then with our desktops we then um, upgraded our windows xp machine to 8.1 and then through Office 365, we then deployed Office 2013 on those machines. Um, so the, in, in retrospect, this was stage one, all complete. So um, we had our um, mail server and you know, we had the latest versions of Office and the latest version of Windows at the time. Stage two uh, was we were looking at um, a way in which we could um, have easy access to our um, CRM and ERP systems. So we decided to look like um, look at a private cloud which could host uh, terminal services so that when we um, made a move across to our, our new on-premise, we could just connect up again to remote desktop and through Office 365, the remote desktop can connect to Office 365 using, um, you know, one of the enterprise plans, which would allow the, uh, which would allow for the install of Office to be on the remote desktop. Um, and as well as that, the remote desktop can connect to the um, to the mail server. We can have Office installed, um, as well as the other services. Um, now, we um, we of course you know realised that you know an upgrade sometimes is necessary, which was one of the drivers behind our decision. But mainly, it was uh, for this Office move to um, you know allow us access. 
and and it was having this mixture of private and public cloud that really allowed us to start the move with with very little hassle um so with our new machines at our new place, we simply just signed in um, through our network, connect to a remote desktop, and then we were, we were good to go. And as a, as a user, I think um, being able to access the cloud anywhere was the main benefit as well, um, but also mobility in the sense that we could uh, move from one location to another and still have access to our work and tools that we, that we need. And speaking of mobility as well, you know, besides the office move, um, another, th um, uh, role of ours is that we're, we're mainly out the office as well being in a sales role so we're always going to be um, you know around uh, publisher meetings going to be at um, events uh, customer sites as well so it's always great to um, have office 365 wherever we go um, and you know having access to all of our all of our documents um, readily available so that we uh, we're, we're well prepared um, so you know if anyone is um, you know, I, I think as well, um, there would, uh, sorry, yeah, I think, um, sorry, just admitting one more person in. So another thing that we use as well is um, mobile and tablet. So Microsoft have got um, applications for iOS, Android, and uh, Windows devices as well. So that's definitely something that we, we use as well. And with the growing trend of the mobile tablets, um, bring your own device in the workplace, it's, it's made access a lot easier when we're at the office or away from our desks. And you know, with the right Office 365 plan, you can edit your documents on the go um, and you know, have access to email wherever we are. Um, so one scenario for me myself would be uh, my morning commute to Reading on Tuesday mornings. Um, before I go into um, Microsoft, I'll, I'll check my grey matter emails on my phone in case I've missed anything um, overnight, anything important. Um, and with um, access to OneDrive, I can access my documents saved in the cloud, PowerPoint presentations that need tweaking, uh, Excel spreadsheets that might need a few more calculations in place. You, you get the idea. And with the help of being able to do this whilst I'm on the train, I'm now more organized and more prepared for my day to come before those important meetings and deadlines. And the interesting thing about Office 365 as well was that um, mainly it was Office and Exchange that was critical to our requirements. There was being able to access our documents on the road, but with the full package, um, it would co it would work out more cost effective um, than looking at um, that. There are plans that are available through Office 365 that you can literally just have Office and Exchange, for example. Um, but the full package would work out more cost effective, and it's with this full suite of cloud offerings that we are now able to explore new ways of working as well. Um, one typical example of this was the um, Skype for Business model. Uh, before, we used to make phone calls, we used to leave voicemails, emails, um, you know, a, a way in which we're trying to wait for a response from the person we were trying to reach. With, with Skype for Business, we can instantly see who's available through presence. Um, so um, through our um, Skype for Business client, we can see who's online, for example, um, who, who's available. Um, who's um, in a meeting or busy, so that they're, they're unable to be to be reached. Um, probably they don't want to be disturbed for for whatever reason, and as well as there's been little or no activity as well, um, just to provide some sort of clear indication on on a on a response time. So it's through this um, availability and presence that it, it really does work wonders and saves a lot of time in our day-to-day -day activities. And instead of dialing a phone number with a with a click of a button, we can um, we can use Skype to you know either call them up directly through Skype for Business or send an instant message um, if, if it's easier for a quick response. Um, another cool feature with Skype for Business that we use as well is the conferencing ability. So we use this to host uh, weekly sales meetings. Uh, we have publisher catch-ups, and it's really handy if anybody's not in the office, if they're working from home, for example, or in a different location. And typically beforehand, with with the whole um, working out of the office, if anybody had to meet in one location, there's the whole travel cost to uh, to, to meet up with one specific location. So a hosted solution for, for web conferencing is uh, a really good way to save money as well. And the last benefit um, 
as well is as I mentioned before it's um it's always great to stay up to date and not worry about the hassle of upgrading ourselves and what I mean by upgrading and I, I speak on behalf of my team <laughs> IT team when I say this is you know it's the time and money it takes to manage and upgrade internally um you know if if users aren't um, ready to um if there's any way in which um you know um you know an upgrade is available then you know it, it will cost a lot of money as well and you know typically with software upgrades there's hardware upgrades to take into consideration as well um on the other hand of the on, on this conversation though um if um users aren't ready to upgrade just yet to the latest versions of um office or exchange online or um sharepoint for example um there is a way in which users can still stay on the previous version for another 12 months if needed and this is really great if um there's any sort of compatibility issues with other applications user training for example um but for grey matter as a business, um, our um, sort of way in which um, we like to operate is to have the latest versions available. And a really good motto that I like to say is um, if we have the latest versions available, then we have the knowledge um, around the applications, around the infrastructure itself, and we can relay this onto our customers. And that mo motto for me is use well before you sell. <laughs> um, so it's really great if we have the latest versions that we can relay back to our customers. So, um, you know, there is that experience around having the latest versions available. Um, and that's a really good um, selling point for us. I mean, for me, for example, one really good feature of Office 2016, for example, is the way in which it works really well with Windows 10 um, and utilizing the uh, the Cortana um, within Windows 10, so the virtual assistant. And it's through the um, virtual assistant that I'm able to unlock certain tools and things I didn't realize I had. So, for example, this PowerPoint presentation, for example, um, I simply put in a, a search for what I want to look at doing and Cortana will assist me with that. So that's just an example. Um, but um, that's um, that's pretty much um, all of my all of my slides. Um, I just want to say, you know, if um, I, I appreciate any sort of feedback on this as, as possible. I know it's a different way of presenting. I just thought I'd just explain the benefits from the grey matter side. Um, but, you know, if, if ever, um, you know, anybody wants to sit down and have a conversation around, um, you know, the, 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 the business that you have in, um, in, in question, then, you know, feel free to get me get me involved on the calls. We also have a, a cloud team at grey matter as well that will be more than happy to assist. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to uh, pass you across to, to Mark Deakin, um, who's just going to go into Office 365 a little bit more um, around the latest updates um, and explain from a Microsoft perspective. Um, we also um, will run through another Microsoft offering called uh, Enterprise Mobility Suite. Um, but what we'll do is um, we'll, we'll take some interest for the next webinar, which will be based around this hopefully in about two weeks time. But um, more details will shortly follow to, to all the attendees. But I just want to say thank you um, and I'll, I'll pass you over to Mark Deacon now. Thank you very much, mate. Um, <clears throat> so I've only got three slides to go through, um, but what I'm going to try and do is is cover a few areas. So the first one was actually what's kind of coming to, to Office 365 or what do we have at the minute? So if I think back to when we used to do uh, exchange on premise and everything else, it was quite easy. I used to used to get a, a deck given to me once every two, three years, and it would have all the uh, updates. Actually, finding something like that is, is very hard now um, uh, because the updates come on kind of a, a monthly basis. Uh, uh, and actually, by the time that somebody created that deck, it's probably probably old straight away. Uh, so this stuff here kind of gives you an idea of what in the last, say, six months or so, a year max has, has been added to Office 365. Some big things, some small things, but it kind of gives you at least a, kind of the tip of the iceberg of everything that we've we've added. So one of the first things is actually Clutter is on by default. So Clutter takes your emails that you receive. They're not junk, but they're the ones that you don't normally look at. If this was your personal mailbox, it would be something like Facebook notification emails. Uh, you've signed up for them. You are meant to get them, but you very rarely read them. You always delete them. And those sort of things will go into Clutter. Junk mail still exists, and that's all good. But be aware and start looking um, uh, in your clutter uh, folder. And actually, you should get emails to prompt you to go into there uh, as well. 
Um, there is, as as Christian mentioned, um, Cortana and Office 365 productivity uh, scenarios. Uh, those scenarios uh, come up in a number of ways, but the ones that I've I've seen the most that I find useful, uh, and it's uh, it's helped by LinkedIn is actually uh, if I go into uh, Cortana and uh, there's a connected account session and I put an Office 365 details in there, it'll actually start to show me before I go to a meeting. So say for example, before we came along to this one today, uh, before I kind of met up with Christian, it had um, inside there, it had the, um, the people that I'm meeting, it had a picture of Christian just in case I forgot what it looked like. Uh, and it also um, had the presentation that we've been working on. So should I be forgetful, which is, you know, obviously massively rare for me because my memory is not that of a fish. It is. Um, then I would uh, still have kind of a, I would have Cortana prompt me and say, you've both been working on this document, this meeting that you have, this this kind of thing in the diary. That's probably around this subject. Um, interestingly enough, uh, you can now do LinkedIn as well. So when I go to a meeting with external parties, it'll start to grab their pictures from LinkedIn as well. So that when I meet someone, I go, hi, George, how are you doing? Uh, and it looks like I have an amazing memory. Really what it is, is that I've just seen his picture about five minutes before uh, presented by Cortana. Of course, the the biggest kind of update recently is Office 365. Uh, sorry, is Office 2016 for Windows uh, and Mac. So they're on a, a parity now, and from now on they should be released around the same kind of time. Um, it's entirely new. Um, uh, well, it's an upgrade of, of the existing uh, client and you'll still be able to get hold of and use Office 2013 for uh, a while. Uh, but at some point, we're going to give you probably about 12 months notice and at that point you'll then start to have to think uh, when and if you're going to move on to 2016. The thing to be aware of is if you've been using the Office 365 always up to date, um, you're only really a month behind 2016 anyway, so I'd, I'd certainly look to move sooner rather than later. Office 365 video uh, we've added. So Office 365 video is a version of um, YouTube, but for your internal organization, that's been developed more and more uh, over time. So the stuff that's kind of uh, coming that might be of uh, use is uh, things like groups. So groups has been in Office 365. What we found was people would have distribution lists. They would have um, uh, to work in a team. They'd have a site to work in a team. They might have a Yammer group to work in a team as well. And you'd have to create those separately and trying to give them the same name so it looked like it was all well connected. Um, Office 365 groups is the solution to that problem. When you create a group, it goes and creates each of those different um, resources. So a conversation in Yammer, a distribution list uh, in Exchange and a SharePoint site in uh, SharePoint. Um, Office 365 groups creates that uh, and it's now visible in uh, Outlook. So that kind of functionality is bubbled up in the you know, one plus billion people that use uh, Outlook every day. So well worth having a look at that. That as a product will develop more and more uh, over time. We've added DLP, so Date Loss Prevention, to SharePoint, uh, to uh, OneDrive for Business, and now in Office 2016. Um, so across most of the suite now, we have uh, the ability to restrict the use and uh, saving of documents with particular types of data, like credit card information. And perhaps one of the biggest things that's uh, occurred recently is um, the cloud PBX and PSTN calling for Skype for Business. Um, so that uh, you require an E5 license or you can top up to that in some instances. But the important thing there is uh, certainly in the US and then we'll switch on in the UK in the not too distant future, uh, you'll be able to use Skype for Business as your cloud PBX. So having telephone calls come in and out uh, and the same for conference calling into a, a call like this one. And in fact, that conference calling will probably reach the UK before the full cloud PBX piece does. So a lot happening with uh, the Office 365 um, subscription that you, you, you're looking to or maybe maybe already uh, used currently um, and actually almost too much to kind of uh, list here. Um, if you search online, uh, so if you go to bing.com and type cloud productivity roadmap, it'll take you to a site that explains everything that's in there. Uh, of course, feel free to search in any other search engine, but your mileage may vary on what it brings up. So the next thing to talk about is actually 
Um, when you are looking at um, Office 365, you've got to consider your options. So, so when making a big decision, as um, Christian's uh, fiance did the other day, um, you need to make sure you consider all the options. Now, I would suggest she's perhaps rushed into this a bit and she didn't consider all of the options. Um, but I'm suggesting for a big decision like uh, how you're going to move over or what platform you're going to move over to, whether it's uh, Microsoft for Office 365 or, or one of the competitors, there's a couple of questions you need to ask, uh, I think, the vendor and, and ask yourself. So the first is, where does the primary ve revenue of that vendor come from? Is it from consumers, like it would be with some of the others? Or is it actually 50-50 uh, or, or primarily from uh, businesses and organizations? Um, if a lot of their revenue, if not all of their revenue, comes from consumers, uh, then they're the, really the people with power. So if you need a feature adding to the platform, um, there's probably less chance of that happening than somebody adding, I don't know, a barking dog icon to the consumer client. So, so think where your vendor's primary revenue is coming from. Next thing to think is, is, is your data used for marketing either to you or, or to anybody else? Um, so with Office 365, you are the data controller. We don't use your data for, for anything else. Um, it's yours to own and, and we can't use it in any way. So, so have a think about whether your data has been mined for use to sell you ads or, or anybody else. The next bit is, do, is there support for a hybrid deployment? So is there some on-premise version of what you're, you're going for for Office 365? So some customers will move, like Microsoft, almost all of our stuff to Office 365. So we have upwards of something like 200,000 mailboxes sitting in an Office 365. But actually, um, we still have some on-premise infrastructure for the odd mailbox, uh, for the odd kind of requirement. And so does the vendor that you're looking at have an on-premise option that they can work if you don't want to or can't move everything to the cloud? That's worth having a, a kind of think about. The next is, uh, do they work offline and is it cross-platform? So is it across iOS, Android and um, uh, Windows? Does it go across all of those platforms uh, so the user has the opportunity to decide what type of device uh, it runs on? Uh, and also, does it work offline? Can I access my documents when I'm not on the network? Can I uh, access and change a PowerPoint when I'm sitting at home with no internet connectivity or on a plane or on a train or wherever you may be? So think about whether there is an, an offline syncing option and whether you can actually kind of uh, make and create a, a document when you're when you're offline. Um, and the last thing, which is a really good one to think about, is how quickly can they remove products? So over time, some uh, products will be trialed and, and they just won't be a hit and they won't be um, won't be used by many people. How quickly can those get removed? Now with Office 365, uh, we have to give you at least 12 months notice. And for websites, we've actually given people um, nearly 24 months notice. So actually, uh, when we need to remove a product, we're going to give you a year before we can uh, remove it from uh, from the package. There's only one that I know of that we've removed uh, thus far. Um, have a think about how quickly in the pro in the past um, other vendors that you're looking at have removed uh, products and whether that's going to cause you an issue because if if their product that they think is not important is part of your business uh, an important part of your business process that you go through um, you don't want to have to suddenly uh, over the space of one month or two months figure out how you're going to replace that product with something else so think about how quickly they're going to remove it so as i say when making a big decision Certainly uh, don't rush into it and say yes straight away and go with whoever it is. Have a good think about whether this is the right route to go. Consider the other options, but certainly uh, bear uh, all of these uh, in mind. And I'll, uh, I'll try and make contact with Christian's uh, missus so she can have a, a rethink herself. Um, so um, moving on to the, the last uh, bit, sorry about that, is um, so you've got Office 365 deployed. What next? Um, so most of the customers that we're talking to are looking to uh, attach Enterprise Mobility Suite um, and they're doing it for a number of reasons. So if any of these kind of strike a call with you, 
Uh, certainly if two of them do, then Enterprise Mobility Suite is the, the route to go. You can certainly go and buy each three of these as separate products, and uh, that's that's good for Deakin's bonus because it gives us extra money at Microsoft. But I wouldn't recommend doing that, to be honest. Uh, I think you're better off going for Enterprise Mobility Suite. It'll actually work out cheaper for you. And it's uh, mainly if you've got two or more of these that are of interest. So the first one is... You are going to stick a load of documents in Office 365 in OneDrive for Business, and you're worried about them being um, downloaded to machines that they shouldn't and being viewed by people that they shouldn't. Um, you could stop people using OneDrive for Business externally. I wouldn't recommend that. People will find a way. As they said in uh, Jurassic Park, life will find a way, right? So... Um, if you stop people from uh, downloading documents and having access to OneDrive, they'll figure it out some other way. So actually, by using rights management uh, services, you can secure that document so that even if it's accidentally downloaded onto a USB key or someone else's machine, it can't be opened unless it's an employee of your organization. Think of it as the same kind of technology that you use for digital rights management. So when you share an iTunes uh, file with somebody else, they normally can't play it because it's been kind of secured for only you to play. So that's rights management services. If you have a bunch of other cloud applications that you want to connect to, don't have to be Microsoft ones, it can even be the competitors, uh, or you need self-service password reset for Office 365 so people can reset their own passwords, then that's actually uh, in Azure Active Directory Premium. And so um, within there, um, you could have it so that uh, someone could log on to not only Office 365, but Citrix GoToMeeting, Google Docs, uh, and Salesforce, i.e. a bunch of our competitors as well. Obviously, the experience, once they've, uh, the signing on experience is, uh, the single sign on experience is going to be really good through this. Once you're in there, there's little or no integration uh, within it. But certainly, if you have a bunch of other services, including ones that are not cloud services, including ones that are not uh, by Microsoft, then Azure Active Directory Premium is the one to look at. And certainly, if you want self-service password reset, have a look at that. The last one to kind of go into uh, is mobile device management. So there is some level of mobile device management within uh, Office 365 itself, but that's very much centered around um, uh, the Office applications. With MDM or mobile device management uh, via Microsoft Intune, which is part of EMS, um, you're able to secure Windows devices, both tablets uh, and phones uh, and PCs. And so that's desktops as well. Anything with Windows 8, Windows 7, I believe, and certainly Windows 10 on it, you're able to um, uh, manage. Uh, and also iOS and Android as well. So pretty much all of the platforms for any type of device that you would need, you're able to uh, secure. And from there, you're able to switch on the camera, switch off the camera, switch off Bluetooth, set up Wi-Fi profiles, which is something a lot of people do so that when they come into the office the other thing it does it gives people access to something called the company portal so if you want that expenses application that you use to be available um, to uh, your users but you don't want to stick it on the the uh, the app store of, of whatever flavor uh, then actually you can use something in Intune called the company portal that makes it available for people to um, uh, download but it's kind of separated and segregated from the rest of the standard store so if any one of these three and certainly two of these three are of interest to you then EMS so Enterprise Mobility Suite is the route uh, to go and the key thing here is you pay per user you don't pay per device so again when you look at the competitors they charge you per device normally in our instance you could have one you could have two you could have three you could have five devices if you like we're not going to charge you per device it's literally only um, uh, per um, uh, per user and with that I'm just going to hand uh, back to uh, Chris uh, and we're just going to answer any questions if there are any. So I'll hand back to Chris now. Excellent. Thank you very much for that, Mark. Um, <laughs> don't listen to him around the uh, he's never going to talk to my girlfriend or my fiance now. <laughs> I won't let him. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, take a few moments just to answer any questions. I see there's a congratulations from Jonathan Morris. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, but more than happy to answer any questions that you might have at the moment. Um, I'll just spend a couple of minutes just in case any pop up. Um, but I just want to say thank you for everyone for attending. 
um, and you know furthermore um, here are my contact details should you need them um, and if you know there's any sort of questions or any projects that are on the horizon please do get me involved um, and as mentioned before there will be um, another webinar following up shortly probably within the next fortnight um, that hopefully everyone can attend I know it's getting quite close to Christmas but um, it would be great to uh, see the same uh, same attendees on on this one as we will do in in a fortnight okay so first question from Richard uh, how do we migrate from legacy office 2010 EA to an office 365 deal um, enterprise agreement um, <clears throat> Okay, so um, in terms of enterprise agreement to Office 365, um, Office 365 should be available on enterprise agreements as well. So um, whoever um, is um, managing the enterprise agreement, they will be the first point of call um, from that. Um, I mean, in terms of, it, I'm, I'm guessing it would be um, in regards to the licensing rather than the, the, the actual technical migration, Richard? Yes, that's right. OK. Um, yeah. So, I mean, around the licensing, um, you know, the up to date enterprise agreement would include Office 365 on there, um, depending on the number of users, for example, um, you know, it might be worth looking at the enterprise agreement because I think um, the enterprise agreement would be company wide. So um, furthermore, any further chats, you know, if you want to look at just starting up a few people to begin with, it might be more worthwhile um, looking at a few licenses to begin with. But, you know, every every scenario is different. Um, okay, so there, it's not essentially an upgrade as such, it will be buying a new Office 365 license. So um, the license that you currently have for Office 2010, that's completely fine. Um, when you're looking at Office 365, it will be a brand new um, Office 365 license. So, um, you know, with the enterprise agreements, um, that, would, that would be the price um, on there. No problem at all. Okay, uh, Joe's asked a question. What happens if there is a need to run some legacy versions of Office to work with certain client systems? Very good question, Joe. So the wonderful thing about Office 365, um, uh, something I didn't really touch on too much beforehand, was that Office 365 runs in something called AppV environment. So what that means is that um, if ever there's a need to have a previous version of Office um, installed on a client machine, then Office 365 will run in AppV, which is a virtualized version of Office. So effectively, the two versions of Office can run side by side without um, any issue. Um, so if ever there's um, a need to have a previous version of Office for whatever reason, so um, maybe um, a preference as such, then you can run them side by side. Um, effectively and then obviously when when the need comes to fully move across you just uninstall the previous version of office and um, everything should be um, working fine on that one uh, Charlie's just asked a question I have 365 now in place via gray matter but we have some technical syncing issues via OneDrive for business do you have the SharePoint app downloaded or not um, yeah please Mark I'm just pass you over to Mark just to answer that one Hi, yeah. So, um, for uh, I'm gonna try and answer the question uh, from from what I understand. Um, so, if you have syncing issues with OneDrive for Business, um, it's worth knowing there's a number of reasons why that could be. So, if you're over 20,000 files uh, in OneDrive, that could be an issue. It's 5,000 files if it's in SharePoint. There are some weird things like if it's a over 128 characters deep path, so if you like using the folders, um, uh, nested folders, that could be an issue. And the other is it doesn't like characters like squiggles, tildes, um, hashes, and weird stuff like that. So all of these things stop the sync uh, occurring, and it's trying to figure out which ones are those that it is. Now, this something called the OneDrive Next Gen Sync Client um, that's coming very soon, like really soon. Uh, and that solves a lot of these problems. And actually, when you try and save something uh, that isn't right, it'll prompt you and say, look, you've got the wrong type of file here. Um, so uh, if you've got problems with syncing at the minute, look out for the next gen sync client. And I would expect that to uh, come out before the end of the year, from my understanding. Um, with regard to downloading uh, stuff that's in SharePoint, in a SharePoint site, 
Uh, actually, all you do is you go into the SharePoint site and you click on sync at the top. That actually uses the OneDrive um, uh, for business client. So the OneDrive for business client currently today syncs both SharePoint and uh, OneDrive for business. In the future, so the next gen sync client is actually going to do uh, SharePoint sites, OneDrive for business, but also OneDrive personal as well. So there will be one singular client for all types of different uh, download. So you don't need to download a separate SharePoint app. Uh, you're actually going to use the OneDrive for business client to download um, uh, any of the documents that are in the SharePoint site. Hope that answers your question. Excellent. Thanks for that, Mark. Okay, Charlie's just come back. Should we uninstall OneDrive from each PC? Um, uninstall uh, OneDrive or disable it, um, depending on what operating system you're ru they're running. You're running. You might not even be able to um, uh, do that. You might not be able to uninstall it. You could certainly disable it if you don't want people uh, accessing their personal OneDrive uh, on that work machine. Um, you don't have to. I mean, they, they're still going to be able to go to OneDrive.com unless you disable that as well. Um, the advantage of, I suppose, disabling it is um, it stops the accidental accidental saving of work stuff to their personal OneDrive. So, yeah, it's probably not a bad idea to, to at least disable the, the use of OneDrive, which you can do through group policy and more than likely do through Intune as well. Um, that shouldn't be uh, why there was sync issues. So uh, today, currently, um, the OneDrive bis consumer client is a, is a different download tool to the uh, OneDrive for business and SharePoint sites. There, there are two different separate ones, so that shouldn't have caused uh, an issue. Um, how does... Uh, online Office 365 or SharePoint work with an access database. Wowzer. Um, I'm trying to think actually. I, You're probably about the second or third person that's asked me about access in quite some time. Um, you can certainly save a, an access database file uh, up there. I'd need to do a bit more research as um, as to what you could uh, do with um, saving it somewhere else and actually being able to access it. People tend to move on to other kind of solutions like SQL Enterprise, which is free, or normal SQL, or another kind of solution, something like SharePoint, for to replace what Access does. Is there anything you want to add to that, um, Chris? Um, yes. Um, in regards to the Office 365 plans, um, I'm aware that there is um, Access services within SharePoint Online Plan 2. So um, I could always look into that for you, Grant, um, just to confirm and advise further on that one. But from what I understand, SharePoint Plan 2 would have more um, uh, features that would um, you know, have the sort of um, settings around the Access, uh, Visio, um, Excel um, power features, for example. But I, I will just double check that and confirm for you. No problem. Um, if there aren't any more questions, uh, what I probably will do is I'll call it time. Uh, 40 minutes um, seems quite quite fa fairly reasonable for for a webinar. I won't I won't take up too much more of your time um, unless you all get on to lunch um, fairly early. But uh, you know, once again, I just wanted to say thank you very much for attending. It's been a really great web webinar. It's been really great to have Mark on board as well. Um, I look forward to hearing from uh, most of you as well. Um, you know, furthermore, if you have any questions at all, um, and we will be sending these slides out. We'll be um, putting a record on our website as well just in case anybody's missed it um, and furthermore we'll let everyone know when the next webinar is hopefully around uh, the enterprise mobility suite so we'll we'll dive into more um, more detail around that but um, once again thank you very much for for attending and hopefully see you soon and hear from you soon take care bye bye